Last year, I set myself a physical goal to achieve a 140 kilo bench press. Not a huge bench in comparison to those lifted by power lifters, but for a non-specialist, it's a decent lift. Now, I approached it in a way very common to most gym goers. I decided I would bench to some degree, some variation of pressing movement every single day, and I seriously neglected working on the stabilizers in the shoulder and working on my mobility to keep everything balanced. As a result, I developed quite a serious shoulder injury that has now taken about eight to nine months to overcome. Today I'm gonna to share with you the strategies that if I had have known earlier, one would have prevented that injury from ever occurring, and two, the, uh, the strategies that I used to bring me back up to being able to press fairly heavily, heavy again. Most people don't realize that shoulder injuries usually occur due to issues with posture. So that's where our program is gonna start. Posture, correction, and also mobility are probably the most important areas to focus on when we're rehabbing and also setting the shoulder up to prevent you from experiencing serious injuries. Our program's gonna start right here on the floor with a couple of really, really useful tools that I've worked on uh, and established a great little routine to help increase both the thoracic mobility, which is the, the upper portion of the spine just below the neck, and also the pec mobility, which are the muscles in front of the shoulder, which need to be combined with that thoracic mobility to release the shoulder and allow it what we refer to as glenhumeral synergy. That's a synergistic movement in the glenhumeral joint. So we'll first start with the big foam roller here. Foam roller allows us to integrate movement in the spine over about five to seven vertebra, depending on how tall you are. So first and foremost, we're setting ourselves up on the foam roller here, and we're just going to open up through the spine and then perform sort of like an ab crunch over the top here. And we're gonna work in different areas of the back so we can adjust by rolling forward or of course, rolling backward again. And we wanna work from effectively the start of the rib cage right up to the base of the neck. And we're just opening that up maybe 10 times, nice and slow. Now we can progress that to a more aggressive movement where we use these back balls. These are found online. You can Google backballs.com, they're fantastic. You can also get a cheaper variation on uh, eBay and we place that on the same area of the spine. These are a lot more aggressive and they're gonna help us integrate individual joints. You gotta be careful, it's easier to do it without a t-shirt because it gets tangled up in your shirt. So now we're just rolling over that ball, nice and smooth. For the purposes of this, I can't even take my singlet off because I've got a, a microphone on, so I'll just have to get it right. I do recommend taking your shirt off when you use the back ball. So we're again just rolling over and getting each of those individual vertebra to move a little bit. I'm gonna work it up to the top again. <sighs> Try and pull your shirt tight at the bottom. That works a bit better. Okay, again, rolling through and we're working on each individual vertebra nice and easy. You will find this to be insanely uncomfortable if you're doing it straight away without starting on the foam roller. So I do suggest starting on the foam roller. Now the next thing we're gonna do is try and get some tissue remodeling. What happens over time, when the pecs tighten from working at the computer or driving a car all day, uh, we, t we internally rotate the humerus. This is the, uh, the upper bone in the arm by shortening both the bicep, the pec major, pec minor, and even the lat muscle. And what happens over time is that severely inflames the rotator cuff, or two of the rotator cuff muscles that you find in the back of the shoulder here that go from the shoulder blade or the scapula and insert into the top of the humerus. They help to externally rotate the shoulder, but they also work very, very hard to stabilize the shoulder when we're doing those pressing movements. Most of the time that's where the, the injury occurs in one of those four rotator cuff muscles, but it's generally caused by the tightness that's occurring over in the front here and through the thoracic spine. So once we've worked on the thoracic spine, we wanna work on the front area. Now this is gonna be difficult because I've got my microphone here. I'm not really sure how, how we'll go with this, but I'll see if I can demonstrate on the right hand 
without demiking. So first and foremost, we're going to go through three simple stretches. Laying on the ground here, we're going to tip the thumb downward, place the hand on the ground. Now we're doing a combination of pulling away and rotating over that shoulder, all the while pushing this shoulder downward into the mat. So I'm pulling, pushing and rotating. Three deep breaths. And then release. Okay, now very importantly, the angle here is critical. We want this to be at the same line that the fibers go through into the attachment. So it's about 60 degrees, uh, maybe 55 degrees. If this is 90 degrees, 45 is sort of down here. It's about 55 degrees. Now I see a lot of people get this wrong and they go down here because it's more comfortable. You're actually playing into the imbalance. If you do that, you're not working to correct it. So back it up here, gentle as we start. And as you get more and more flexible, you can really, really increase that stretch. Now, once we've backed it off, the second stretch is palm flat. Now we're working, I should say, this one here, you should feel through the bicep mostly. This one here now, we're in the pec major, this superficial chest muscle. We're gonna rotate over. I do apologize if the, uh, the microphone's getting a bit of static from this. Turn and pull at the same time, pushing that shoulder into the ground. Very nice, three big deep breaths again. Then we're going to slightly bend the elbow. Very, very important that the elbow remains higher than the shoulder. Again, this is now the pec minor. This is the deep pec muscle. We press in, pull down and rotate away nice and gently. This one is quite a deep stretch. Three big deep breaths. The pec major actually inserts into the, uh, about four of your ribs. So if we can get the rib cage to expand through a deep inhale, then it's gonna really, really accentuate that stretch. So we rotate, we pull, we push the shoulder down, and then we Beautiful. I can really feel that letting go. Now the last stretch we're gonna do is for the anterior deltoid on the outside front of the shoulder, placing the arm straight down, and we're just gonna to roll to the side nice and easy. We can stretch up like this, or at Unity Gym, we actually combine a quad stretch with this to help lever the body over, keeping your gaze straight forward and keeping that knee down nice and low to the ground. Very nice. And we've done that entire shoulder girdle now, all of the pecs, the anterior deltoid. Now we're gonna do the rotator cuff. The rotator cuff we do sideways like this, and we call this the sleeper stretch because it's a sleeping position. With our arm up like this, very gently, we're gonna internally rotate the hand. Now, most of you will find that it gets to here and it'll feel really uncomfortable. Remember, I've spent eight months, almost nine months, developing that mobility, so it's nice and comfortable. It's very, very important that you don't overstretch, okay? So that's very, very nice and a fantastic way to increase those external rotator mobility. Remember, these are the muscles that are most likely inflamed if you do have shoulder issues currently, so you may feel really, really tender in there, okay? Now, we're gonna take it to a whole new level. We're gonna introduce the massage ball. I've got a spiky massage ball, which is even more aggressive here, to get some tissue remodeling whilst we're doing this. So first and foremost, we're gonna go through the pec again. Now the muscle that we're trying to hit is the pec minor. So we're gonna replicate that pec minor stretch, which is with the bent elbow. We're gonna place the ball down into that pec minor area, and we're gonna rotate and stretch, and then gently massage that out. Now, this is a much more advanced variation. I'm gonna stand up in a moment and tell you how to do, or show you how to do a more um, uh, beginner version of this stretch. But this is fantastic for you guys that have a little bit of experience using massage balls. It's really, really effective to get through the outer tissue, get deep into that pec minor and get that tissue remodeling and healing in the right length again. Okay, breaking down those adhesions through the muscle bodies. Now, while we're down here, we're going to do the rotator cuff as well. So we're gonna go into that sleeper position again. And we're going to, for any of you out there who have, uh, who ha don't have access to these massage balls, 
You can use a lacrosse ball, you can even use a golf ball if you, if you want to. Uh, I, I prefer the spike, it helps to bring a bit of blood to the surface and you'll see, I'll show you in a second, I'll have sort of spots all over my, my skin from where the spikes have been pushing in quite hard. So I've found the back of the rotator cuff, you'll know when you hit it because if it's inflamed it's going to feel horrible. Uh, but we need to work through that a little bit. So I'm just massaging up and down through the insertion in the middle of that muscle body. You won't be able to go to the origin of the muscle body because it's on the shoulder blade and it'll feel really uncomfortable pressing into the bone like that. We're more working in the insertion to the humerus. And now I'm actually going to take it through that stretch range of motion, so the sleeper stretch. So I've sort of pinned the muscle with the massage ball and I'm just giving it a deeper massage here whilst stretching it at the same time. Really, really effective. Very, very nice. Okay, I'll get a little bit more. I'm going to get down into my lat, down the bottom there a little bit. So we'll roll through there a little. Oh yeah, oh that feels amazing. Okay, fantastic. I'm pretty sadistic, you may not agree with me that that feels good. Now, quickly demonstrate the easier variation of that. For the beginners, we're gonna use a pole and stand up. Now you can use the corner of a door if that is all you've got. This would be the door. We're gonna use the ball on the, on the wall here, or in my case, the upright, the pole, and we're gonna replicate the same, exact same stretches with the tissue remodeling uh, golf ball, lacrosse ball, or massage ball if you've gone online to buy one. And we're gonna work through each of those muscle bodies. So first of all, we're doing the pec minor, uh, again, up and down in that stretch position. I've, got, I've rotated away. This is a really fantastic one for, for the beginners who can't quite get the stretch on the floor. Then of course we can get through to the rotator cuff and the lat by going through the back of the shoulder with the lat and, and the, sorry, uh, the rotator cuff now. We can stretch through the back there and rotate at the same time. So we just, it's just really a matter of playing with those different angles. Always be careful on yourself, don't go too far, and just slowly starting to apply a little bit more pressure with the balls. Now we've got a, a, a whole heap of different balls here at Unity Gym that we use for this, ranging from quite soft and easy gentle ones right through to this one that's really quite hard and, and pretty, um, pretty intense when you use it. The next phase we're going to work on is hanging. And this is, the, this is like the critical transition. Once we've developed enough mobility through massaging and tissue remodeling, and the injury starts to settle down enough that we can go above the head without causing you a lot of discomfort, and that's very important. If you're still raising your hand up, or we're doing the um, elbow to nose test, which is the subscapularis test, and you're still experiencing active impingement, which is a pinching or a sharp pain in the top of the shoulder there, then you're probably not ready to go above the head yet. If you can do those tests where we elevate the shoulders, we're not getting any impingement, we do the active impingement test where we're placing the palm on the hand, touching the uh, nose with your elbow, you're not getting impingement pain through either of those elbows, then we can start going above the head. So we'll go over, we have a myriad of different apparatus at Unity Gym that we use. We use the Olympic uh, rings here, and then obviously just the bars. A little hack, because we're going to be spending a fair bit of time up there, I highly recommend chalking up. It's really, really important that the grip doesn't become your limiting factor. In the early days, it will, and it's going to be an issue. So if we can eliminate part of the stress to the skin on the outside with a bit of chalk, lifting chalk, it's going to be highly beneficial. The first variation of hanging we're going to use, which is the easiest, is using these rings and we're gonna put our body into what we call a thoracic extension. So gripping, keeping in that uh, pronated grip, we're just gonna lower ourselves down and we're gonna push the body forward slightly so we're actually in a gentle thoracic extension. We're gapping the spine, we're opening right up through the shoulders and we're just nice and gently hanging for about maybe 20 seconds like this if you can, 20 or 30 seconds. I'm gently rocking forward and backwards, side to side. We're just trying to distract that shoulder girdle a little bit and allow those shoulders to elevate right out of the joint. Now, when you first start, you will experience 
quite a substantial stretch through the pecs and shoulders. That's totally normal. Just be gentle and always use a progressive overload technique. So start off gentle and slowly increase the intensity and the time that you spend up here. Once we've achieved that, we can go into a full body weight hang. And that is going to be straight over here on the bar. And then we're just going to hang. You can use any upright you can get your hands on. Uh, so long as it's not too difficult or interfering with the grip. And we're literally starting, this is the first time we start to take our own body weight. So I've got my toes, tippy toes on the floor here and I'm slowly allowing my body to sink down into that stretch. Really opening up through the shoulders and through the chest. And that's really, really good for also developing that gripping strength, obviously. I guarantee you the limiting factor will initially be the grip. So hopefully you've taken my advice and chalked up. But uh, as you build that grip strength up, you'll be able to stay there for longer and longer and longer. There are experts in the industry who believe that up to six minutes of hanging every day is, is insanely good for your shoulder girdle, for de, um, uh, compressing your spine, all sorts of fantastic things occur once we start to spend a bit of time with the hands above the shoulders like that. So if we're, uh, my, my theory is for every press that we do above the head, shoulder presses, we should spend probably about 30 seconds in the hanging position, decompressing those joints, working the joints in the opposing movement, okay? Once we've mastered bilateral hanging, that uh, refers to both hands gripping the bar or the Olympic rings, we're going to start moving into more advanced hanging progressions where we go single arm or unilateral. So we're going to jump up here. Very, very important is that we have our feet on the floor for this one. So if you can't reach the floor from your hanging apparatus, whatever that may be, you must elevate the feet. You've got to get a, drag a bench or a step or something like this. This one's probably, possibly a little too high, but that's cool. For the purposes of this video, I can still demonstrate the movement absolutely fine. So, I'm starting with my weaker side. This is the injured side. Gripping, we're hanging directly underneath. So effectively, I'm, I'm just free hanging, but I've still got 30% of my weight taken from my feet. And then I'm gonna rotate all the way, as far as I can go one way. We're stretching all of the connective tissue from my gripping muscles right through to my rotator cuff and my shoulders. Go a little bit further than you feel comfortable. Hold it for a few seconds. Remember, I've got most of my weight here. And then we're gonna spin back the other way. And we're gonna stretch the opposing T uh, tissue. So now we're really stretching the opposite way. Nice and easy. Hold for about 10 to 15 seconds and then we'll spin back and release. And then we're going to do the other side. So again, we're going to rotate right through. I'll go the opposite way first this time. Nice and easy. Doesn't really matter which way you go first. One side will feel a lot tighter than the other. We're going to rotate through, nice and easy. <sighs> Stretching all of those tissues right from the rib cage up through to the gripping muscles, the forearms. Very nice, back through. And you can do that maybe two or three times. Each time before you start to do your big heavy pressing and pulling movements. And that's going to really help to remodel the tissue through your arms, it's going to help improve your gripping strength. You'll, you'll know what I mean when you're up there, you'll find probably the most challenging part, the grip. And it's going to also improve the mobility and strength and the structural integrity of those shoulders. We've covered all of the mobility movements now and we should be getting a, a real handle on that self myofascial release, tissue remodeling using the, the uh, foam rollers, the massage balls and the back balls. But now we're going to move into isolated and compound movements to strengthen and safeguard your shoulder. So this is probably the most common movement that you'll get prescribed from physiotherapists. It's referred to as IR and ER or internal rotation and external rotation for the rotator cuff specifically. 
Uh, I have no problem with these movements and I do a lot of them and there are a myriad of different neurological pathways that you can use. In the gym here we use dumbbells a lot, uh, but I'll demonstrate using a band because this is probably the easiest variation that you can do right at home uh, by just grabbing, picking up one of these um, uh, uh, exercise bands. You can go to any sporting goods store, you can attach these to a door handle or whatever else you've got around the house and this will work really, really well for you. So I'm going to grab this place the hand about my belly button. I'm going to try and localize my elbow so that the arm doesn't move around once I'm in motion. And then I'm just going to simply externally rotate that humerus, which is the upper arm, the, uh, the bone in the upper arm. Nice and smooth. We, we respond best to around eight to 10 repetitions, that external rotators, nice and easy. So these are the muscles that we were stretching with that internal rotation sleeper stretch. These are generally the guys that become very, very inflamed. So it's important that we've spent a fair bit of time massaging them, remodeling the tissues, letting them settle down again before we start to really, really flare them up with a bit of strength work. Start uh, uh, light and obviously adopt that progressive overload method again. So eight to 10 reps, maybe three or four sets. Then we move to internal rotation. While I'm here at the camera, I'll demonstrate with my other arm, with my left arm. So again, we just do the complete opposite movement. We're going to internally rotate that humerus. Nice and easy, same rep range. And this is working the subscapularis muscle that's a little bit deeper in the shoulder. Eight to 10 reps, three to four sets, and you're done. Now, after that, we've worked up increasing the ER and IR movement, we need to start working on stability above the head. So we're doing the opposite to what we were doing hanging on the bars here, and we'll demonstrate that with some kettlebells. Right, we've got here a 12 kilo kettlebell. Most of you guys will start quite light. I started on about four kilos when I'd injured my shoulder. If you're doing prep work to avoid injury, you probably start on about half of what you would do on a dumbbell press. Uh, if you're rehabbing an injury, start on the lightest weight possible. If your kettlebell selection does not go lower than sort of ten, um, eight kilos, then start with a dumbbell, a, a three or four kilo dumbbell. You'll still get a similar movement. What we're doing here is inverting the kettlebell and that creates instability. The, the heaviest weight is at the top now and the kettlebell wants to move around. And then we're gonna replicate what we refer to as a neutral grip or semi-supinated grip, shoulder press, and we're having to balance that kettlebell as we go up. So it's creating an instability or an instable environment for the shoulder. You're also gonna feel it's quite a lot of work on the forearms and the, um, the extensors and flexors in the forearm. And that's okay, that's cool, but we don't want that to be the limiting factor because remember, we're here to rehab and safeguard your shoulders. So we do roughly eight to 10 reps. Again, we're working on a rep range that works most optimally for the rotator cuff. I know that the, uh, the delts, we like to take the reps a lot higher to develop mass in the shoulder. With the rotator cuff generally, they, 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 they respond better to around that eight rep range mark. So if you're doing like 15 or 20 reps, possibly the weight is a little bit too light, okay? Obviously always we balance out by doing opposite side as well. And I tend to prefer to lead with the weaker side. So we're dictating the rep range and the intensity with that weak side. Over time, the two sides will be even or become closer to even, as close as possible. So that's our inverted kettlebell press. Again, adopt a progressive overload method where we start light, slowly progress the weight, so we're increasing the intensity over time. All right guys, so we've worked through some mobility exercises, some tissue remodeling and um, self myofascial release movements. We've worked on quite advanced mobility, stretching and strength training movements. And then we've worked on anti-stability and ER and IR movements. The last piece of the puzzle is to just progress yourself through a really, really well balanced strength training program. What I mean by well balanced is that we continue to work on mobility. So adopt an ethos that mobility comes first always. And that way you'll keep that shoulder girdle really nice and healthy. You'll never experience the issues that I had to go through last year. And also we work on working agonist and antagonist muscle groups together as evenly as humanly possible. So the way I like to do that is we at Unity Gym here, we always group 
horizontal push and horizontal pull on a one-to-one -one ratio, very, very importantly. And we work on our shoulder stabilizers constantly. So at the end of every strength training workout, we work on one facet of the shoulder joint to keep it really healthy. Now I'll rip through those movements very, very quickly here so you know what I'm talking about. And then really all that's left is for you guys to get stuck in. Once we've overcome the shoulder injury, IR or internal rotation will be taken care of with all of your pressing. So there's no real need to continue developing internal rotation strength. That's taken care of. What we do need to do is keep counterbalancing with ER, external rotation strength. So we use a myriad of different dumbbell external rotation and it's literally as simple as keeping the shoulder as still as possible you don't ever want to lift a weight that's so heavy that it pulls your shoulder forward and backward. We want to keep that shoulder localised. We aim to hit that 8 rep range mark. This is a nice light weight for me, 5 kilos. It should really be about 10% roughly of what you can dumbbell press. So if you can dumbbell press 50 kilos, then uh, 25 in each hand, then you should, be, you should be using a 5 kilo to keep yourself in balance. If you can dumbbell press 100 kilos, i.e. 50 kilos in each hand, then you should be doing 10 kilos here, or even a little bit more for around the same amount of reps. That's just a nice little hack to keep you, yourself in good balance. Okay, the next movement we're doing is called a dumbbell Powell raise. We're gonna lay side saddle on the bench here. I call this the centerfold position. We're gonna lock the elbow and raise the dumbbell straight up into the air. Super important, pay attention to the fact that I have no inertia at the bottom. So I'm letting the inertia cancel itself out and then re-establish movement without jerking or throwing the dumbbell. We don't want to be yanking it up. It means the weight is way too heavy. So a short pause at the bottom, back up, and probably three, two, one on the eccentric tempo. And we're going again. This one we can take the reps up a little bit. Maybe 10 to 12 repetitions would be ideal because we're starting to hit the rhomboids, not the rotator cuff anymore. So rhomboids, lower traps, even the upper traps a little bit because of the angle. And we can progress this one in difficulty by bringing the bench down until we're on a flat surface. Okay, the final piece of the puzzle for our shoulder conditioning outside of instability work is what we call the trap three raise. Uh, this one, we have three different variations and they depend on what angle the body is positioned. The first and easiest variation is where we have the body at about a 45 degree angle. We retract the scapula into position. We load the shoulder through an active range of motion, nice and controlled back, and then release the shoulder. Very important that we're getting that scapular retraction. You want to be able to pause at the top to confirm that you do have control of the weight and then release the shoulder. So one two, hold for two seconds, nice and slow down, and release the shoulder. And that is the dumbbell trap three raise at a 45 degree angle. All right guys, the final piece of the puzzle, we're here. We're ready to rock and roll now. If you've followed all of those steps properly, you've given yourself enough time, if you were suffering from a shoulder injury, there's no real set timing. Uh, usually each step you wanna work on for at least sort of four workouts or four weeks, whatever comes first. Remember, it took me eight months to rehab my shoulder and get it back to pressing a decent amount of weight. The last piece of the puzzle is, as I referred to, working agonist, antagonist evenly. Now, this is a difficult variation of a horizontal pull. This is what we call a bench row. I'm using a thick bar. I've got about 50 kilos loaded up on the bar. And you'll notice that this is actually a cambered bar or a U-bar, it's been custom made so that I can pull it past the bench and get full contraction in my rhomboids, a little bit more contraction in the lats and biceps. This is a fantastic movement to offset the bench press. So I'm going to let my shoulders drop all the way forward. I'm gonna retract the scapula, pulling right through to that bench and I'm getting a great retraction. Again you really should be able to pause at the top. Anything less, you're probably lifting a little bit too much weight. And that is the bent over or bench row. And you can obviously also substitute with a bent over row. All right guys, all that's left now is to get going enjoying your bench pressing. I really hope you've enjoyed that uh, video. That's pretty much everything I've done to help overcome my shoulder injury and now 
continue safeguarding my shoulders so that I can continue pressing healthy and some reasonable weights.